Hey, I'm Tom Leonard. I'm the host of the Gamers Change Lives podcast. It's a show where we talk to esports entrepreneurs around the world to talk about how esports can create jobs almost anywhere, especially in emerging markets. And I'm sitting in today for Catherine Noor, who generously let me take over her chair here today. Now, we're going to be talking with two accomplished female esports and gaming entrepreneurs who have made an impact in the wide world of esports from places like Africa, Southeast Asia, China, the US. First, the first guest is Eniola Idan from Lagos, Nigeria. She's the founder and CEO of Gamer Africa, which has been doing amazing things across the African continent. Welcome, Eniola. Thank you very much for having me, Tom. Um, where, where are you talking to us from? I'm talking to you from Dallas, actually, in the US. Great. Okay. So, so not in Lagos? No, not in Lagos at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of um, traveling because um, there are a couple of uh, meetings and events that I'm attending in the U.S. currently. Great, great. We also have Chantelle Denise Ortega. She works at Galaxy Racer and is one of the founders of the Asia chapter of Women in Games. Welcome, Chantelle. Hi, Tom. Thank you for having me here again. And thank you to Think Tech Hawaii for having us. So, um, so where are you speaking to us from? I'm currently here in Mexico City, like when I had the guesting at your podcast. Still here, but leaving this week. Oh, really? Where are you going to? I'll be going to Lima, Peru for about the month. <laughs> wow. Wow. That, that sounds great. <laughs> that sounds great. Now, today we want to have a discussion on how culture impacts women in esports and games. And more, it, more of a conversation, not just on how, not just about women in games, but how culture impacts the, uh, people joining the industry and also rising to the top levels in the industry. Now, as I say on my podcast, I am not the expert, I'm more of an explorer. And that's definitely the case here. The role of women in society differs from location, from culture, from history. And these factors are going to make an impact on women in games. So starting with the question, I'll start with you, Chantel. How does culture impact women in the industry from your experience on the countries where you've been? Yeah, so I come from the Philippines. I personally believe that women in my culture are seen as somewhat powerful. Um, what we call mothers in our culture is like the ilaw ng tahanan, meaning the light of the house, which I take it as a guiding. Um, we are the guides for people in our company and our family. And I think for the Philippines, there's not really a huge difficulty to enter the games industry. However, when I entered the games industry, it was because there was an opportunity in Malaysia so that's how I got into the gaming space. And I believe that for that country, there's just some cultural practices that will make it difficult for a woman such as myself to actually meet, for example, government agencies who you want to have like conversations with. Now, did you find it different from the Philippines to Malaysia? Uh, yes, because I feel like in the Philippines, I could just like, go meet whoever I want, you know. But in Malaysia, they do have um, some religious and cultural practices wherein, you know, when you're a woman, you can't offer your hand uh, when you're meeting someone. And then my experience was, um, there was this instance that we were going to be working with a government agency. But then since it's Malaysia, it's a Muslim country, the practices are different. They said to us that they would prefer to talk to a male counterpart. But the problem was I was the only one in my esports um, outfit, so we had to hire another guy to <laughs> join. Just, just yeah. to speak, just to speak for you. Yeah. Yes, I, yeah, I, I, I remember being up for a job to go to um, to Indonesia, and this has been many, many, many years ago. And they're like, "No, he's too young. We can't have someone that young. People won't listen to him." So there, there are some. Um, some situations like that. How about in Africa, um, Aniola? How does culture impact women joining the uh, esports industry? Thank you very much for the question, Tom. Um, I mean, just listen to Chantal talk about the Philippines. I'm, I'm jealous, right? I mean, we may that we get. I mean, we got women at the light of the house. It's it's very different here on the continent, on the African continent, because again. 
women, the way that women, I mean, the description for women is typically um, the own maker, right? So there's no, there's no, there's almost no place for a woman even in across different sectors, not just gaming, right? So um, when you now talk sports, you now talk esports, right? It is heavily, heavily male dominated. So um, taking, I mean, just taking that head on and stepping into the space takes a lot of audacity and guts to be really able to say, this is what I'm doing and this is what I want to do and this is how I am going to do it and this is who I am. Um, so it's very different here. There's almost no place for women um, in terms of, you know, you trying to build a career out of something at all. And then I'll talk esports. But um, I also, um, I, I, I believe we're starting to see, a, I mean, some sort of changes in that narrative already. I mean, I did it. 30% um, of my team members manage management um, of my management at Gema were women, right? So again, it's almost been that change that you want to see. And then, you know, it's one step at a time and, and we're doing it already. So what, what, what do you think of the differences between, because I know like in talking to you before about doing your GamerX 10 Nation tournament across Africa, you're talking about, you know, some people from um, Central Africa, East Africa and West Africa, where it's, there's, a, there's a complete language uh, difference there. It's one of the things that, that I was learning more about was just that how French is the, the, the native language, the native um, language that, that people speak in, in West Africa. Do you notice a difference between the different regions in Africa on, as far as women's access to uh, being in the esports business? It's a common problem on the continent. Um, that's that's the that's the simple answer. It's a common problem on the continent. I mean, the, we we celebrate, <laughs> we we literally celebrate when a woman get a, a, a role um, that has been settled with a lot of male dominance for for years. So it is a general problem. It is common. It's not specific to Nigeria, our origin market. It's something that we have witnessed across the various markets. Um, however, the narrative is changing, like I, like I mentioned earlier. No, let's talk about that for just a second. Um, first with you and then with uh, Chantel. You're saying things are, things are changing. What's making them change? I, I would like to say the, the, the cost for the, the changes we're seeing is, again, um, women are taking up roles. Um, I'm going to make reference to a young lady who recently emerged as 30 under 30 on, on Forbes for Africa. Um, she's she's um, Queen Arrow, right? She is a Tekken player and for such recognition, I mean, there's been a lot of male um, players in that industry and on the continent for, for a very long time, right? But she got the recognition because I, I like that. I believe she's gone the extra mile to showcase our, our work, to walk the work and walk the talk, and you know, intentionally creating space and taking up space for herself. Um, and that is what we're saying. Um, there are, uh, there's been a lot of education around female gamers as well, as well as um, you know, the female um, taking up positions and roles in the industry. So, um, I mean. The world is paying attention, and this is talking in terms of global um, global presence for, for the continent. And women are really doing this. Um, Gema is literally present um, in 12 markets on the continent. We are working with um, different partners from every part of the world. And it's easy a woman leading that. Um, that in itself is a statement to the rest of the world and even the continent that, it, I mean, if you give women the chance and the opportunity, they will make something out of nothing. So I, I like to say that is the reason. I mean, that is a major reason for, for the change we're starting to see now in the that's, industry. That's great. Um, so Chantel, are you seeing women making something out of nothing in, uh, 
in, in your experience? What, and what is, what, what are, are you also seeing changes in some of the markets? Because one of the things I learned about in talking to you and other people about Galaxy Racer is just how many different um, cultures, how many different countries Galaxy Racer is part of. So are you seeing changes also for women in, in some of the places that you're, you're working in now? Yeah, definitely. Um, so when I started in esports and gaming in 2019, there had been a lot of focus on just like pushing a lot of esports tournaments, but not really like now when they want to have focus on like female initiatives, like women empowerment, female gamers and all of that, which is very good. Um, seeing that change throughout four, three years um, is really amazing because you know that what you're doing is making a difference. You know, um, when I joined Women in Games as an ambassador and then eventually as a leader for Women in Games Asia, I realized that there are a lot of women in the industry who just don't have support who, or who just don't know anyone. And, you know, by meeting other like-minded ladies like Enola here, um, we can really make a difference wherein, you know, we support, we empower, we give them what we need. And it's a future that I, that I am looking forward to, wherein, you know, gender doesn't matter in gaming. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I remember you talking about when we were, um, when you were on the podcast was talking about creating a pipeline because you were talking about inviting more women into the industry, but also creating a pipeline for women to go to the very top levels of leadership. Can you talk a little bit maybe about how culture impacts women to be the leaders, the top leaders of of a business in in mm -hmm. places where you are, Chantel. Yeah, definitely. I do want to raise that. For example, in gaming, right? What we know is that it's a male dominated industry. Gaming gaming has always been targeted at men. So, from my in my point of view, it's like you know, it's not the men's fault that they're the ones being targeted <laughs> for gaming. But it's more on like the cultural practices. It, it was just the norm for like the first few decades of gaming that, you know, it's mainly guys who are like playing. But for now, there is a lot of changes. For example, we do want to have more representation for our young female gamers. They actually, you know, when they grow up, they can really take up um, profession, uh, profession as an esports athlete. And on the creating a pipeline, um, it's one of our pillars for women in games wherein we prepare, we expose ladies interested to join the industry to different workshops, networking expos, and all of that, which I didn't have when I started in this industry, which I think is really beneficial to those who are like interested to join, who are seeing a lot of developments in games. No, I think you're doing a lot of, of great things there. I mean, I, I, I'm always hearing good things about what women in games in particular, is doing. Um, in Eola, in Africa, do you see that there's a distinction between people, women just joining the esports industry and also being able to run an esports organization? I mean, talk about a role model. I mean, you were already running one of the, the top esports organizations in Africa. Yes, um, we're seeing a lot of that. Um, I think first is the mic it's the mind the, the mind barrier i think that um for some reason um gaming is from, from a perception standpoint has been perceived for a very long time as a, a male thing um so what we sort of deploy i mean what we deployed when we were starting out and i made this i made this an agenda right is the education and I'll also, I'll also use this opportunity, you know, to say to um, a lot of females who want to get in the industry or, you know, being in the industry and you just think that I can, all, I, all you can be or all, all I can be is an athlete, right? They're different. I mean, think about the esport and games industry as, a, I mean, think about it in, a, in the entire full spectrum, right? You can be, um, you know, you can be an event um, producer. You can be, you can be anything. I mean, there's a digital um, opportunity as well. You can be anything. It's an industry just like any other industry. So you really necessarily don't need um, the skills, right? You don't have to be a gamer to be in the industry. There's really no barrier as to what you can become, right? When you just like 
set your mind to it. If it's an industry you find interesting, and the truth is, for, for, for me on the continent, we're just starting. Um, you know, I feel like the future is so exciting, like Chantel said, that really, that really warmed, warmed my heart. We're just starting. And because of this, you know, there are several opportunities that should be taken up by women. And because again, if women can take up these opportunities, then, um, you know, we're also throwing the ladder back down for, for more people and opening up um, spaces um, for, for more women in, this, in, in the industry. But I think there is no limit. And I think that should be the message really. You can be anything. You can be a content writer in the gaming industry and esport industry. You can be you can be anything, right? From just start from being an intel to intent to an associate to I mean the full spectrum and up until getting into a leadership um, position or role in, in the industry. One of the things I like in talking with you, Aniola, is like every single time, almost every time I hear you talk, you start going through a list of all the jobs that can be created in esports. And I think that is so good because a lot of people, I mean, Queen Arrow, an excellent um, role model if you're going to be a player. But but like you said, and when you were on the podcast, you were talking about the one that's always stuck with me, a, a drone operator. You hired a drone operator for the event. I thought, man, how, how exciting would that be to be the drone operator inside, inside one of these places? Also wanted to then touch on, first maybe with you, Aniola, how important is the education and maybe are there changes that need to take place in education to to give more women the skills to join the industry? I think that's that's the base of anything. That's the foundation. Um, you cannot be what you don't know, and you cannot even aspire to be what you do not know. So I I believe that's the base for the engagement and for the conversation. Um, one of the things, I mean, thankful, thankful to you, um, Tom, for putting this together. Chantel will make my, my work um, easier because one of the things I, I had in mind attending Paris Games Week um, later this year um, is to really have conversations with um, organizations such as Women in Games and see what representation of that body can be in Africa so that we can then start to tour that lane because it's the foundation of anything, right? We really need everyone, I mean, particularly women who uh, are, you know, they're aspiring to get in the industry. They want to get in the industry, but they don't know how. They don't understand anything. They don't know, I mean, they just don't get it. So it's important for us to do that. It has to be very intentional. We have to be deliberate about it because it's the foundation. If we do not educate um, or showcase the opportunities or you know, tell the story correctly and you know, spotlight women who are doing amazing in this space that people can turn to and see as role model, then it's going to be a really hard sell. So um, if you ask me, my simple answer will be education is really the baseline for, for this change we all want to see. Is that the same for you, Chantal? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, calling attention to our cause, having partners who really believe um, in the same um, advocacy as us, wherein, you know, you want to educate your younger audience, you want to train them, you want to create a pipeline, um, as we mentioned, wherein they can really inject themselves into the industry with what the skills they have. It, it, so if there, if there turns out to be an Africa chapter of Women in Games, this show gets credit. You guys get credit for <laughs> okay <laughs> for for making something like that happen. So, one of the things I wanted to talk about here um, also is in in any only you were starting down that road. Maybe I'll let you finish. Um, what advice would you give someone starting out? What if there's there's someone that that is thinking, you know, maybe you know, maybe I have the skills to do it and so on. What what advice would you give to to a woman of any age interested in joining? Um, the esports gaming industry. Aniola? Just do it. <laughs> Thank you. Really? Yes. I mean, just do it. And um, I'm not a gamer. You know, I'm not a gamer, right? Um, I got interested. I mean, it was something that, that caught my attention from just traveling around the world. 
and you know thinking back and seeing the talent that exists in in my own country and on the continent and I saw that great opportunity and I said you know what we are going to build this we're going to build out the industry I had little to zero I had zero knowledge I'm not even going to say little so this is me just getting up and saying I'm going to do it and I and I am doing it um of course it will be unfair of me to say that I haven't received significant, significant amount of support from people who believed in this crazy vision or mission that I, that I embarked on. And those um, people have sort of provided uh, me with, with the support needed to, to thrive and make the journey um, easy as we, as we continue to build out. Um, but it started with my mind. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to get up and do it. And I will find support that I can leverage on. I mean, Tom, you have been instrumental um, in our story in the last couple of months since we met you. Um, I'm meeting Chantel now. I'm really, truly hoping, you know, we will build a lot of things out, you know, together. Um, and just do not be afraid to ask for help, really. I mean, <laughs> I say it all the time. No one gets credit for, you know, for going the difficult route or taking the difficult route when you can find support or find help if you just ask. You know, everything you need, that's, that's something that I, I, I say to myself, everyone you need to meet and everything you need, but just five doors away. So do not be afraid to knock on those doors. So I think ask for support, ask for help. And of course, you cannot just do it without making that decision to get the requisite knowledge as well. You have to learn. You have to unlearn and you have to relearn because there's certain beliefs that you have that you have to drop if you really want to like thrive in this space that naturally um, has been considered as, as unfit for you um, by, by all means necessary. So I think first is just do it, get up. Two, ask for help. Um, ask for help, however, you will get no's, of course. But um, the no's are always, always super, super interesting for me. I take them as challenges and I'm like, I'm going to make you come back to me. <laughs> so, yes. Um, <laughs> no, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great approach. And I think one of the things that, that I learned certainly in talking to almost everyone on the podcast so far is that they're doers. They don't sit around. They're not looking for a roadmap. They're not looking. They're not, they're not waiting for permission to go do something. They're just going to go do it. So Chantel, what advice would you give someone who is who is thinking about joining the esports, the gaming industry? I would have to agree with Aniola that yes, just do it. Because <laughs> like I just found out you also are not a gamer initially, but you know, um, as I mentioned in our podcast, Tom, I was also by accident came into this industry. And that is why, like, you know, we have to educate ourselves, like what do we want to do like how is the ecosystem of the industry because you know what i found out whatever skill you have we can really inject it into esports you know um a lot of my colleagues in galaxy racer well half of them are gamers half of them are like from different industries but it works because you know they bring in different um skills and knowledge from those industries into esports and i think that's what makes it really um developed and Another advice would be to really, um, you know, educate yourself, yourselves, connect with, for example, Women in Games, um, which is a great resource for, you know, support. Um, and then also, for example, there are a lot of organizations now who are really running um, women empowerment initiatives in gaming and esports. So, for example, um, for Galaxy Racer North America, we have for Galaxy. Yeah, and in this ecosystem, we want to create a really sustainable, sustainable ecosystem wherein, you know, we give them the opportunities, the funding um, for these athletes and also behind the screen. So, for example, our cameramen, um, our staff, we're really providing opportunities for women who want to break into this space. Could you, sorry to interrupt, but Chantel, could you describe in just a little bit more detail quickly as we're running down the clock here, but... Um, can you describe about what Galaxy Racer is doing in the U.S.? Because I thought that was a really interesting approach to what they were doing. Yeah, so Galaxy Racer is very active in different regions of the world. So we have MENA, Southeast Asia, and Europe. Um, for North America, our main 
um, our day-to-day -day is really delivering for her galaxy. So it is our main IP wherein we really have to create like an ecosystem for women wherein they, those who are aspiring to be esports athletes or those who, who want to try um, being in an official tournament for esports, um, we are giving those opportunities. And yeah, for us, it's our day-to-day. -day. Um, every day I'm looking for partners who want to connect with us. You know, it's just to really um, send the message across and bring awareness to what women are facing in the games industry. And we just want, you know, opportunities for everyone. Which is really interesting because we're talking about culture and a lot of times we think of <laughs> what's the culture in Africa? What's the culture in Malaysia? What, but what's the culture in the U.S.? And so that's, it's, it's really an interesting thing that, um, that uh, re an interesting approach, I think, that Galaxy Racer is taking in, in, in joining them and coming to the North American market. One, one quick question I wanted to go back to, to each of you and maybe with you, Aniolo. Are there any advantages to being a woman in the, in the industry? Yes. I mean, yes, I, I, I fought long and hard because, um, you know, first is I try as much as possible. I think thinking about it in that way, man, woman in the industry, I think that's limited. So for me, I, I try not to like say it, but there is a lot of advantage because one, it's not common. So people pay attention to you, which means extra work because when you're coming, you have to come correct, right? Yes. And don't expect to sit at a table or get, you, you get attention because you're a woman. So it's extra work, but again, it's, it's an advantage um, to really, really show that, look, women can make a difference. I am a woman and I want to make a difference. So I think that advantage, uh, it's, 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 it's precious, but again, you really just need to make the best out of it. You know, one, of the, one of my favorite things from politics here in the U.S. was, uh, I think uh, Shirley Chisholm, she said, if they don't invite you to the table, bring a folding chair. <laughs> right. And that was just like, okay. Chantel, in the last few seconds, any advantages to being a woman in your part of the world? Uh, an advantage would be, as Inola said, you know, we're not the main players in the industry. And for example, for her galaxy, um, there has been a lot of like movement wherein companies would like to do something for the, D for the DAI initiative. So that's an advantage for me because, you know, there are brands who want to work um, with you for your women in esports. And I think personally, an advantage would be, you know, women are just more warm when you're meeting them for the first time. And I think I've been using that tactic uh, when I'm meeting um, new brands. And I like it because, you know, there's the genuine, authentic connection. There's empathy for their brand and for yourself. That's that's great. We are running out of time here. I just, this has been a great conversation. I can just keep going on and on and on. And I really appreciate both of you. Uh, people can see in the, in the, in the notes, um, in the video, where to go find out more information about what each of you is doing, because you guys are both role models to women out there. So thanks again. This is the wide world of esports. I'm sitting in for Catherine Newart. My name is Tom Leonard. I'm the host of the Gamers Change Lives podcast. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.